Hey ladies, I have a little something different for you this week. I am doing a rewind of episode number two. Making friends as an adult is hard. Now, if you've been here since the beginning, maybe you heard this episode, but that was episode two. (laughs) That was over 80 episodes ago. I definitely think it's worth a re-listen. If you haven't had the time to check out episode two, you are in for such a treat. I bring my humor and honesty and combine it into a very real discussion about making friends as an adult woman. P.S. Still hard. (laughs) Now, in keeping with being real and authentic always on this podcast, I'll tell you the plan originally was not to do a rewind episode. However, I've really been struggling with some health issues and just not feeling myself, struggling with chronic fatigue, like the kind of fatigue that keeps you working with a client and then right back into bed. I appreciate your support and love for this episode. I can't believe how many women have responded to episode number two. I'm curious, has anything changed for you since you first listened to it? How does it speak to you today? A couple of things to note before we dive in. The first thing is I have full show notes, meaning the entire transcript to this episode if you are interested. If you head to www.healthcoach4life.com backslash blog, All of the episodes are there, including this rewind with the entire full show notes and transcript. The other thing you might notice is this episode, along with several others, was under my original podcast name. There was a whole lot of issues. If you scoot over towards episode 10, you'll hear all about it. No matter what, you still get the same gen. So let's just dive right in. You are listening to the Women Living Better podcast with your host, Jennifer D'Amato, episode number two. Welcome, welcome. I'm so glad you are here, whether it's you're returning or you're here for the first time. I'm just so grateful. Hey, you know, today we're going to dive into a topic I know, I know that you ladies can relate to, friendship. So as soon as I say that word, friendship, maybe you found yourself picturing your bestie, you know, your best friend, right? Maybe it's a small group of women that you see when I say friendship. Or maybe, just maybe, you cringed. Yes, cringed. What makes me cringe as an almost 40-year-old woman, when it comes to friendship, having to make new ones. Anyone with me on this? Okay, are you cringing now? Making new friends as a grown woman is like being back at freshman year of high school, on the first day, in a new school. It's awkward, uncomfortable, You know, you're looking around for someone that appears to have one thing in common with you, even if it's your clear love of mascara. You know, I'm always wondering, how much do I share? Do new friends need a health history? How about the way in which my childhood shaped me into who I am now? No? Too much? What about my parenting style? Religious beliefs? The fact that I can recite line after line from the TV show Friends. How you doing? No? Awkward? You know, no one tells you when you're younger that you're going to have to make friends again and again and again as an adult. Yes, yes. So I sang along with that cute little nursery rhyme when I was a kid. Remember that one? Oh my gosh, are you going to make me sing? Make new friends, but keep the old. One is silver and the other gold. Lies. All lies. 
For a long time, though, I did believe this little nursery rhyme to be true. I believed in part be because I see that my own parents, you know, they've had friends since high school, into adulthood, into parenthood. They actually, oh my goodness, they still, in their 60s, still have these friends. It's how I thought it was. It's how I thought it should be. However, if I look at that realistically, they did stay living in the same area up until just about 14 years ago. I did not. I literally have kept one close friend from high school. So we've been friends since we were 13. It's so easy. No history needed. She already knows it all. No childhood stories to share as adults. She's either heard them all or, <laughs> or witnessed them. Heck, she even called to ask me for ideas for a Friends show-themed party for her soon-to-be 16-year-old because she knows my affection and um, slight addiction to the show. I started believing I needed an application process to enter into friendships with women. No, seriously, guys. Seriously, I was debating creating one. You know, I had these terrible, life-sucking, draining, one-sided friendships, one after the other after the other. I got to the point where I went over, <laughs> I went over for a, let's call it what it is, an adult play date. We said it was for the kids. You know, the one you say that you put together for the kids with a new family that you're getting to know, but really it's a trial to see if you two grown up women will want to even play together again. So I sat in her kitchen and told her flat out, I almost didn't come here, and then proceeded to tell her why. Toxic, one-sided, draining friendships. So at the end of my confession at her dining room table, she looked at me and said something that spoke volumes. I feel the exact same way. What? It's not just me? Here's the thing, making new friends is hard. It's hard to accept that even those you make may not be for a long season. It really does seem easier to not even try, not even put yourself, your stories, your mess out there. Yes, yes, it's easier, but it's also lonelier. It's really when I shifted my mindset to see adult friendships differently, to hold them like I would a newborn baby, gently, not too tight, and starting to recognize you don't control them, but rather you're there to feed them, to nourish them, hold them when they need comfort, Feel the love when they can express it and just allow for time to pass and have its way, whether you're ready for it or not. Am I saying that this idea, this way of approaching friendship eliminates all awkwardness? No, but it does begin to eliminate expectations. You know, a great woman told me, when you let go of your expectations, it becomes difficult to be disappointed. Mm. Let me say that again for those of you who needed to hear that. When you let go of your expectations, it becomes difficult to be disappointed. So I want to encourage you to step into the room. Walk up to the woman who just might be someone you will connect with and say hi. I love your eyelashes. My name's Jennifer. What's yours? I can't wait to dive in again with you guys next week right here on the Women Living Better podcast. Be sure to click subscribe so you never miss an episode. And of course, your feedback matters to me. So go ahead and give my podcast a rating wherever you are listening from. That was really fun to re-listen to, and it does get me thinking again. We're never really done. 
We're never really done with this process of making new friends. All right, ladies, thanks for taking a little trip down memory lane with me. I hope that this spoke to you and I can't wait to join you again next week. Hey ladies, if you've ever struggled with thoughts about your body, thoughts about, am I eating enough, the right foods? I don't even know what healthy is anymore. I want to invite you into a private consultation with me. Yes, I'm your podcast host, but I'm also a certified health coach, a certified life coach, and I specialize in intuitive eating. I would love to talk more about where you are in your health, what your desires and goals are for it, and find out if working together is the best step for you. All you have to do is go into the show notes, click book a consultation, pick the time and date that works for you, answer a few questions to apply, and the rest is up to me. I'll give you that call. We'll talk. It's all about you and meeting you exactly where you are. I look forward to talking.